Dear soul friends, uh, we're going to do our wonderful meditation uh, by virtual means. And uh, as we do each part, uh, you can push the pause button and meditate for as long as you like, and then go ahead. Afterwards, we will do our weekly knowings with the questions that you've brought, uh, just a couple of them each time. And I'm so glad that we can have this opportunity to stay connected in our gen energies and in our hearts. So let's begin. I'll have a little touch here. Good. Close your eyes, take a deep breath into your body, and ask your higher self, your all-loving, all-knowing higher self, to take a form for you. It could be a tree or a being or a light, an equation, whatever form comes. Imagine that form of your own inner voice, your own higher self, and ask it to touch your body where you hold your divine essence at this moment. Feel that touch wherever it is. Imagine it and breathe deeply into that touch and then draw your higher self into your body and sit in meditation. giving and healing. See that flow through and out, giving each being a sense of safety and purpose. could talk on isolation. I have no family and am not all that connected to begin with, but with everything closing and with everyone self-isolating, isolation is turning into depression and self-destruction. The isolation is worth, worse than the virus. And the next question is, for those of us who are physically alone, while our families and friends are in corona hotspots, my older daughter, is in Seattle and my younger daughter is in the south of France. WhatsApp only does so much. How to help them and me 
through this? Wonderful questions, very timely. Uh, first of all, I would like to say something about this aloneness and the, the sense of being isolated or to cut off from the rest of the world. The crux of this question is that you have yourself, you have nature, you have your consciousness, you may even have animals around you. It's very important at this time to recognize that the most important aspect of our embodiment is the evolution of the soul. And so this is providing each one of us an opportunity to get to know ourselves. I would spend this time uh, discovering yourself, asking your body questions. Where do I need the feeling of being loved or being a part of something, for example? And ask your body where that is, bring your conscious awareness to that part of your body, and prick it open so that you allow yourself to imagine a sense of being a part. You're a part of this whole world. We're all sitting in our little caves right now, uh, but we are more connected than ever before because even without modern technology, we have the power of the heart, we have the power of the consciousness that doesn't know time or space is not limited. And so what you want to do is to begin to build a relationship to your own body, to your own conscious to consciousness, and to yourself. Uh, so don't allow that desperation to be there. Remember that humans have been taught, and certainly it is part of our genetics that we are a group animal and that we have to have each other to, to find purpose. No, our purpose is to recognize the self on the highest octave, to know that you have a higher self, that you're not alone. You are with your body. You are with your spiritual purpose. And to radiate that out into the world, that, let that be your gift, and know that it will go across the ethers and nothing can stop it. What would it be, for example, you could ask yourself each time, what is it that I would like to give to everyone outside, other people who feel isolated? Maybe I'd like to give them a, a, a sense of humor. Maybe I'd like to give them the smell uh, of sweetness or the vibration of love. Uh, infinite uh, ideas that you could come up with. And then imagine in your meditation, in your there, that you're sending that out across the world and that it makes a difference. And it does. It truly does. So don't be separate or, or, or destructive, but use this moment on the planet. We've called it in. We've magnetized it for some purpose. And that's not to die. It's not to, for fear. It's to overcome these illusions that we've held before, that we're vulnerable or that we're isolated. We're only isolated um, physically. We're not isolated emotionally, psychically, or spiritually. So imagine that the whole world is tuned in to you spiritually and that you are going to give them the best, the very, very best of your own wisdom, of maybe a, a funniness that you have or peacefulness that you have. Uh, you're going to be the giver. So that's uh, what I would offer to you. Use it and pass it on. You're not alone. Now the second part it fits right into that, dovetails into that conversation when we are here and our beloveds are in hot spots or our beloveds are vulnerable as far as we can feel because there are many cases of the coronavirus. We forget that there's a big question here. And the question, the question is, is it their destiny? Because if it is, there is nothing you can do about it except to honor that destiny, to become sick from the virus. And again, 90% of the people that become sick with it will overcome it. And they will show themselves, for the, maybe for the first time in their lives, that they can overcome something that's so frightening to other people. And by overcoming it, it will inspire everyone around them, everyone they know, to say, I had it, I'm done. And so don't worry. Go on with your lives. Go on with your uh, sense of, why am I here? rather than, why did it happen to me? Uh, most likely, it will not happen to your beloveds. And what will help that is that you hold in your consciousness the power of them to choose what belongs to them. My higher self says, is this your destiny? And if it is, how can you use it rather than it use you? This is very, very important. 
And so the second part of that would be to actually go from uplifting your consciousness, trusting uh, those that you love, to be in the right place, to uh, be able to help others and to not, not uh, be vulnerable, to release that vulnerability. One of the things that you could do is to simply, in your consciousness, do an exercise that will uh, support your holding them in the light of power. For example, you could bring them into your mind's eye and ask them where they hold in their body immunity, where they hold in their body uh, the power of courage, the power to, um, to see the end and to go on. And wherever you kind of have a sense of that, maybe you see it or you hear it, maybe it's in their heart, maybe it's in their hands, maybe it's in their minds, then just imagine that you bring your consciousness to that place in their body. And imagine that you reach out uh, and very lightly touch that place to awaken it, to open it up. And imagine that that place of courage or immunity or, or power opens up and that the energy flows through their body. And then as you've touched them and you feel that opening, then sit back and just imagine that that energy is flowing through them. And that then they become, and this is how we do the dominoes effect, not through negativity, but through positive and powerful light energies. Then imagine that as it's flowing through their body, that it begins to ooze out of them, out through their auric field, and flow out into the world, so that they themselves become the givers and pass that psychic, spiritual, vibrate, emotional uh, message. Uh, you are courageous. You are immune. Uh, you are powerful. You can give to the next and the next and the next. And if we do that, that virus will disappear like nothing. It has done it before, it will do it again. And so, uh, don't, don't hold negativity in your mind. I know that psychogenetically, all of us have been programmed that the more we worry about others, the more we show our love. When you talk to them, as you were saying through um, WhatsApp or, or FaceTime or whatever it is, don't show them the face or the sound of worry. That's a negative energy. Show them the sound, the face of um, laughter, of grace, of fearlessness, of we are in this together and we are going through and imagine the end of it. We will take a deep breath at some point and say it's done. And what has it taught us? What has the gift been for us? To show us that we're not vulnerable, to show us that we have a different uh, purpose of being in body, a uh, purpose of the soul. So many things that can come to us and give us the kiss of wisdom and evolution. Trust yourself and be positive and uplifting. That's the only gift to give. Next one. Chris, how about some wisdom for dealing with anxiety and our four-legged friends? My dog seems to be taking on the anxiety of the world on his shoulders. Mm. I'm very grateful for that because I think probably most of you have some kind of a four-legged around, a dog, a cat, or, or an animal, or even your plants. I, I have seen my plants respond to people who come in to my home that are negative or fearful. And so I think the most important thing is to clear that negativity from you because your dog or your, or your four-legged or whomever it is is sucking it in from you. So clear it out of your field, release it from your body, replace it by something that's strong. And again, um, I think one of the most important messages that you could give to your, to your four-legged friend is, don't take this. You don't have to take it for me. I have seen, even in my own case, I have seen animals die for me and take on those energies. So I know very, very well what you're talking about. But now I know that I can communicate with them. I can tickle them. I can make them happy. I can play with them. I can release that anxiety in them. And again, you could do it in one or two ways. You could say, where is my dog? Uh, or my animal holding anxiety, and what color does it mean? Because everything, the rocks, the animals, the trees, everything responds to light. And then draw it from the cosmos, don't take it from you, and send it to your animal. Or the opposite of that is, um, where do you hold uh, the gift to me? 
the gift to all humans of being in the astral world and being in a world where there are smells, where there is every moment something new to look upon and then enter that world with them. If you have to get down on the floor and play with them or throw them gifts or whatever it is or observe them, give them something that distracts them as well as you. And the more that you are distracted, the more that you allow yourself to be lighthearted and to be trusting of, of who you are, the more your animal will show that back to you. And so it's a place where there's a give and a receive and a gift and a receive back and forth and back and forth very quickly. Because animals don't hold memories, they don't hold long time feelings. Uh, they can be distracted instantly. Give your dog a cookie and you'll see him, his, his whole energy light up and on to the next. And so we are the source. What is the source you want to give? Do you want to give a source of anxiety? Do you want to give a source of playfulness? Our animals are the gift to us to say, let that go. Come into the astral, come into our world and, and be a childlike being who is full of adventure and possibilities. That's the way to heal it and it will be very quick and again. Heal the self, heal the world. Heal the world, heal the self. Be and allow the gift uh, to come and go through the wonderful portal of animals. Great love to you all, and until next week. And know that you have a purpose in life, and that you are here to take anything that's out there and use your creativity and the power of your heart and the power of your consciousness uh, and the, your embodiment to make a difference on this planet. Great love to you all.